Hello again, friends. Uh, in today's video, we're going to attempt put a, to put together some equipment that I received over the last several months and see if we could make it work. Uh, in particular, what we want to do here is see if we can get this HF radio. That's uh, a Falcon 3. Uh, H, sorry, yeah, Fal Falcon 3 HF radio, the 7800H dash MP, MP for man pack. Uh, if we can get this to work with this Falcon 2 150 watt amplifier. Um, and uh, this is normally, this was originally designed for the Falcon 2 RF 5800H, also known as the PRC 150, uh, depending on the encrypt cryptography in it. And actually even earlier, there's an earlier version nearly identical, I think it's only some firmware difference, called the, the RF5033. This is the 5833. Uh, let's see, is that right? 58, yep. And the earlier version, the 5033 uh, amplifier was for the original PRC138, which is a Falcon 1 series. So, uh, so this, and I, I know some people who've gotten this to work fine with the Falcon 1 PRC138. So in those cases, this can work with the Falcon 1, 2, and hopefully we're gonna make it work for the Falcon 3. Now, uh, in, or, uh, in order to do that, there are a couple of bits that we need to integrate that you might have seen in a previous video. If you haven't, uh, go check them out. This is called a slice, and the part number here, uh, I don't know the part number, but it's a 150 watt adapter, Falcon 3 adapter, and it's designed, as you can see, uh, hopefully this is, you're getting all this, uh, to take the smaller radio and uh, interface to it, Again, I don't know if this is being uh, on the back here. And then this sits, this sits on the amplifier. We use this interconnect cable, which is the same interconnect cable that we'd use for 5800, the uh, Falcon 2 radio. But in this case, um, the radio does not have the accessory connector because it's too narrow. The wider radio would have space for it. This does not, so they put it on the back. They put it on the back of the radio here. And through this slice, they bring out all the signals to this connector. So, um, and the other piece we're gonna do, we, I, I've got this also as part of the deal. And this, if you noticed, um, normally the 5800 is mounted with clamps here and here but the radio is too narrow, so they provided this that uh, mounts here and then locks in the radio. I'll, sh I'll assemble all this and, and show it to you. So um, a few things. One, uh, got this amp at a really almost free price. It was, it was you know, a couple of tens of dollars. Um, and one of the reasons was because it seems to be missing some bits and pieces. One, I noticed it's missing there's a plate here that screws over here uh, and provides, uh, one of the things it provides, it provides some of this, which is uh, like grounding connections with these fingers. Uh, and, and, you know, whatever else, it just is a little, it probably pro provides a little depth, uh, pushes the radio up a little to make it line up. And, and, that, and that's missing. And also uh, the, the two clamps on either side were missing. And so I got a good deal. We didn't know the status of it, whether it worked or not. So I got a good deal on it. And then as I've been looking at it and, uh, uh, you know, admiring it, I realized a few things. One is that the, this um, slice here has three holes that match the same pattern as these posts with screws in them. Uh, I'm sorry, with uh, tapped taps holes, these, these standoffs. And you can see here, there's a bit of a, there's a, a, a ring or a, a sleeve. And lo and behold, which I didn't realize, uh, this slips right on into those standoffs and a place for screws. So, okay, clearly, I guess when you're using this with a slice, that you, you, you probably intentionally remove that back plate and instead, uh, this screws in place of it. And then realizing that we were missing these clamps and also realizing that this 
uh, doesn't use those clamps, it has its own clamps, I started to think, well, you know what, maybe this amp, since it came with all this other kit, maybe this amp was, was in fact used uh, with this or a slice. It just seems to be having been prepped already for these components. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna put it all together and, and test it out. Here I've got my, uh, let's take a look at what else we have here. Uh, standard Harris 28 volt power supply. We've got my trusty dummy load watt meter, which we, we, we hope to do some power tests. And I'll show how it's all uh, rigged up in the back. So do a little handheld here. You'll forgive the shakiness. Um, so here is the power supply. I'll just show how, how that's set up. We've got the AC power comes in over here. DC power goes out. AC power uh, plugs into the wall. And in this case, the DC power goes into this rear connection. If we had a, uh, on the 5833, if we had a coupler, the coupler would connect here. Uh, this is the HF antenna. Um, it's an N connector. I just put an N to PL because we want to interface with the back of the, uh, uh, the, the watt meter. And uh, the other things it has is down here, it's got a VHF antenna connector. So this radio will do 1.5 to 60. And if you're doing you know, 30 and above, you'll want to use a different antenna and it'll automatically switch to a separate antenna. And then uh, a, little, a little power connector for, for the fan, uh, which we don't, we don't have here and probably don't you need in, in without, using, without using data modes, you probably don't need it. So, through a little testing, I discovered that these are 632 screws, and I need really like uh, 7 eighths of an inch. This is, um, this is a full inch here, uh, and so I put some, I just put some um, uh, split washers here to take up a little bit of space. And then uh, these here take a quarter 20. Good to see that this, the U.S. equipment still uses imperial uh, 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 measurements and, and not a metric. Uh, and so, yeah, I'll put this together. Okay, we're only gonna put two in for now. I think that's enough. And we don't have to over tighten it. This is just uh, for testing. Okay, let's put this bracket on. Okay, there we have it. Um, and let's, let's start connecting it up and put the radio on and go from there. Okay, we've assembled, we've put the slice on, we've assembled the mount, the locking part of this mount to convert the wider, uh, the, the wider base amplifier to the smaller base 7800H radio. And now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is connect, this is the cable that connects from the slice, uh, which is the back of the radio uh, connection, goes through here to the, to the accessory port. Let's connect that up to the amp, and this is, uh, through this is going to power the radio, as well as tell the amplifier what, uh, what frequency has is, is been selected, or frequency band has been selected. Uh, for its internal uh, bandpass filters, and of course, uh, to drive a coupler, which we connect to the back here if we had a coupler. So let's put this all together. I'm gonna put the side on first, because this is a bit of a difficult connection to do. Oh, oh that wasn't too bad. Uh, let's route this down here. This is kind of a short cable, but this is the right size cable, according to the manual. This is a 17 inch cable. Let's see if we can get this, okay. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Let me get this out of the way. Um, and then uh, again, let's take a look at the back. I think you can see this, the back of the radio, power comes in and all those signals come out. On the wider radios, uh, the 5800H radios, there are two 
of these high density connectors. I'm not sure what they're called. One is they're both, both have this data connection, which has both audio and data on it. But on the wider, the wider radios, there's an additional port on this side, which is for control. And that is where, uh, that's where this accessory connection normally connects to on the 5800. It goes from a port here in, into here. On this radio, it's too narrow to uh, uh, provide that extra port, so they put it in the back. And uh, as you can see, here's that, high de that uh, I don't know, DB something. Uh, and then uh, the signals come through here, and you've got this slice to bring it out as if the same port were uh, just like the same port on the 5800. So let's put this in. Let's get it all lined up. There are some guides, guide posts here. Okay, that's in pretty good. And let's just lock it in for good measure. Not too hard, just enough to keep it from moving around. Okay, looks pretty good. Okay, and the next step is to power it up. Let's do that. So the moment we've all been waiting for, let's see if we can get the radio to power up on the new base, and then we'll do some power tests. First, flip on the power supply. Uh, hmm. Oh, right, oh, this has to be on uh, plain text. Plain text, cipher text, load, zero eyes, and clear. Not sure of the difference. Uh, oh, yeah, it would help if I turned on the switch here. Uh, hmm. 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 Huh, no power. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> that's a bit of a bummer. Um, let me take off the radio and let me see if we're getting power through to the battery connection and uh, huh, go from there. Well, not exactly the outcome uh, I was hoping for for a video, but let's go a little further and see if we can not figure out the problem. All right, well, let's, let's see if there's any voltage coming through. Let's uh, turn on the power supply and make sure that this uh, circuit breaker is on on the mount. That looks to be on. Uh, let's turn on the voltmeter and let's start probing. We should get power in uh, uh, at least some of these. I don't remember which pins are which, so we'll just do a quick round the, around the world check of it. Let's take a quick look. I'll go around, around the world here. This is uh, hundreds of millivolts, so that's nothing, nothing. Nothing. Millivolts. Hmm, nothing. So let's do some testing of the outer connections. Hmm. Appears to not be any voltage in the, uh, on the battery connection. Huh, well, this is unfortunate. Uh, so that means either a couple of things could be wrong. Um, number one, I, I have tested this cable before, the, the power input cable and the, pa and the power supply. Those I know are all good. So the uh, problem could be somewhere in the amp. It could be in this cable. It could be in the slice, in this thing here, that, the slice that produces the power. And so what am I going to do uh, to troubleshoot next? I think the easiest thing is just going to be turn over the amp and open it up and just see if I see anything obvious like a, a missing wire. Uh, something disconnected, uh, and then continue to work our way. All right, taking the screws off, let's take a look inside. Oh, I see the problem. Oh yeah, that's a pretty obvious problem. Well, uh, <laughs> let's take a closer look inside. Yes, this amp has no guts, uh, save for some <laughs> wires, a uh, little interface board here, but there's, there's no amp. The amp should be in the far back. 
back here attached to the, uh, I don't know if you could see that, attached to the uh, heat sink. And there should be, I believe, some control boards and stuff in here. All right, well, you know, you never know what you're gonna get. This, fortunately, this amp was very, it was practically free, uh, thrown in with a bunch of other things for a couple of bucks. And so, <laughs> I guess we're gonna have to wait for a part two to, to get this working. I have another amp. The other amp is currently installed in my Land Rover. So, uh, my part two may be a couple of months from this one. Uh, but I promise we'll get this, get, get a working amp, a known working amp, and continue through with this test. All right, everybody, so long.